that come in. You know, all day we've had folks out in the field interviewing people, leaving the polls, just getting a bigger and bigger pool of voters. So that process is still ongoing as this uh, as the polls stay open now. But we're going to show you the first sort of uh, a compilation of what's been conducted so far. These numbers can change a little bit, but you know, it's like that Polaroid photo. It's coming into focus what this uh, what this electorate looks like today. And I think there's two things to to go right in on here. The first is this: the big question. You mentioned this as well. The party ID. This is an open primary. Anybody, as long as they didn't vote in that Democratic primary three weeks ago, which only 130,000 people did, anybody else who's registered can vote. So the question we ask in the exit poll is, are you, do you think of yourself as a Republican, an independent, a Democrat? And you see 69% here call themselves Republicans, 21% independents, 4% Democrats, 6% say something else. And of course, you know, so much of this primary has been about Nikki Haley running up massive margins with independents, especially huge numbers with Democrats when they're able to participate, but Donald Trump dominating among Republicans. So that's why people are so interested in this question. You add up the non-Republican share here in our exit poll, it's 31% combined compared to 69% Republican. That's what we're seeing in our exit poll. Two points of reference on this. A month ago, New Hampshire. Remember, we talked about Haley just running up the score with independents and even Democrats. Well, that electorate in New Hampshire was 50% non-Republican. It was 50-50 electorate. 50% non-Republican. Tonight in this exit poll, we're seeing 31 in South Carolina. The other point of reference is a historical one. What is the all-time high in terms of the share of a Republican primary electorate in South Carolina that's not uh, Republicans? The answer is the year 2000. George W. Bush, John McCain, McCain, like Haley now, big appeal to independents and to Democrats, Bush more with Republicans. The number in 2000, the all-time high in South Carolina, was 39% non-Republican. So this number you can see right now, well short of that 39. And that 39 was not enough for John McCain in 2000. He lost the state by 11 points to George W. Bush. So that's one thing we're seeing right now in, the, in at least this first wave of the exit polling. The second thing that we're seeing right here, I just point out to you, we look at this number well, it's very important in Republican primaries. What share of this electorate calls themselves evangelical, born-again Christian? It's two-thirds. It's 66%. We said the terrain gets very different demographically when we go from New Hampshire to South, to South Carolina. How different? This number in New Hampshire was 19%. That's one of the most secular Republican electorates in the country uh, in New Hampshire. You go to one of the more evangelical heavy electorates. Look at that difference there. 47-point swing. Now, take a look at the map. As I said, it's going to start lighting up here just after 7 o'clock we think we'll start getting early vote reports from these counties. In a lot of these counties, the early vote will be a third, maybe more, uh, of all of the vote. Nikki Haley, if she is going to pull off the mother of all political miracles tonight and win the state, or failing that, if she's going to have a, a strong showing, what's seen as a strong showing, the key for her, demographically, we've seen her appeal, it is to the college-educated, it's to higher income, it's to suburbanites, that's both within the Republican Party and among independents and Democrats who she's trying to lure into this Republican primary. So where do you look on this map for that? Well, right here, this county, where the city of Charleston is, Charleston County, this is sort of the mother load of uh, college-educated, higher income, uh, suburbanite types. Uh, this is one of the only two counties in the state that Donald Trump did not carry in the 2020 general election. This is the first congressional district of South Carolina. So you've got, look for Haley here. She needs to run up big numbers in Charleston County. Also part of that first district right next door. This is Beaufort County. This is where Hilton Head is. Again, this is a bastion of voters who have college degrees and also part of this district, the fast-growing suburbs of Berkeley County. Again, this is the terrain Haley really needs to run up the score in. Where else does she need to, to do extremely well? Well, the state capital, Richland County, Columbia. Again, one of the highest concentrations of college degrees in the state. Again, among Republicans and the kind of place where she wants to be pulling in a lot of Democratic voters, a lot of independent voters. If it's going to happen for her, it's going to happen in Richland County. One other to look at is in the upstate, this county, Greenville, where the city of Greenville is, is actually going to produce probably the most votes of any county in the state tonight. And it's a little different, Greenville County is, than the rest of the upstate, a much higher concentration of college degrees right here. So again, if Haley's having a super, super strong night, it's even going to show for her in Greenville County. Because I say Greenville's the exception in the upstate, you could basically draw a line. See York County, Rock Hill here, that's right outside of Charlotte. You could just basically draw a line. In this zone here, in the upstate, nine of the ten highest concentrations of evangelical voters in the entire state. Nine counties 
out of the 10 with the highest concentration of evangelicals are all in here. And this was a trouble zone for Donald Trump in the 2016 Republican primaries. That's part of this story too. Remember, we talked about it in Iowa. In 2016, Trump had struggled with evangelicals in Iowa. Eight years later, the presidency later, he had a political bond with evangelicals that powered him in the Iowa caucuses uh, six weeks ago. And again, this you would look to, Trump's campaign would now look to this as a major source of strength outside of Greenville, along with his best county in the state in 2016, Horry County, fourth largest in the state, Myrtle Beach, Conway, a lot of retirees, a lot of folks they call Trump transplants, uh, folks with conservative pro-Trump politics who have moved into the state. You would look there for it as well. And again, less than 20 minutes now, we'll actually get some results.
Yeah, so again, we, we, the way we're explaining this is there's three waves here of data just as, as we accumulate more and more interviews. So now we're getting numbers from that second wave. So again, it's an even more kind of complete picture of what this electorate is looking like. Um, it, it hasn't really changed. I can tell you the headline is it hasn't changed really from what we saw in the first wave. So if anything, those numbers are really kind of hardening. But what I can show you are a couple more ways of looking at this electorate. Um, number one here, let's take a look at the education divide because this is huge within the Republican primary. We talked about Nikki Haley relying so much on voters with college degrees, economically upscale, suburbanite, that sort of thing. And this is obviously important in general elections too. We talk about it all the time. So what's the breakdown in this electorate today? 43% college grads. That's what we're seeing in the exit poll. By comparison, 2016, the Republican primary then, remember Donald Trump won that one. That year in the exit poll, it was 54% with a college degree. So this number looks like it's going to come down substantially from the last time around on the Republican side. And we don't have a graphic for this one, but I want to show you again just to illustrate how different this electorate is from the one that voted in New Hampshire a month ago. Remember that New Hampshire race? I want to say it was close, but Haley probably did a little better than expected. Uh, in, we ask about ideology. Are you a liberal? Are you a moderate? Are you a conservative? So what we see here in the exit poll in South Carolina is liberal is 3%, not too surprisingly, right? Moderate is 18%. And conservative is 79%. That's what we're seeing in South Carolina. Now, compare that to New Hampshire last month. Different story, right? In New Hampshire, the conservative number was 67%. The moderate number, by comparison, was up to 28%, per, uh, 27%. Uh, and... Um, and this was 6% for the, for the liberals. So you can see a less conservative um, electorate in New Hampshire, more conservative in South Carolina, as we said, much more evangelical, uh, even relative to past South Carolina primaries. It looks like a higher concentration of voters without college degrees. So those are some of the things, again, as this is now second wave data we're talking about here. So these numbers are really kind of settling. We'll have one more wave, but before that, the polls are going to close in less than three minutes.
It means that the exit poll is unusually overwhelming in this case in every conceivable category. And also keep in mind, South Carolina, we have been able to monitor turnout to some degree because there is fairly extensive early voting in South Carolina, you know, probably somewhere in the order of one third, maybe more of the votes uh, uh, that will be tabulated were already cast before uh, election day today. I'll just give you a sense, again, uh, we'll have counties lighting up here very shortly, and it will be the early vote that's reported out first. But it give you a look inside this exit poll and a few more, uh, and I see Trump is there, so feel free to, to give me the hook here, Chris, but um, uh, we could show you, this is a, an interesting one right here, the educate, we were talking about the education divide, okay, here it is, those without a college degree, this is a bigger share, we told you, by double digits, a bigger share of the Republican electorate than it was eight years ago, and look at this, Trump is winning it by 50 points right here, this same demographic of voters without a college degree in New Hampshire, Trump's margin was 36, so he's actually significantly done better with that in South Carolina. And again, the share of the electorate, the turnout of voters without a college degree as a proportion, much higher. And then look at this, a bit of a surprise among voters with a college degree. This was a strong suit for Nikki Haley. Uh, she won this group. Haley won this group in New Hampshire by 14 points in her own home state, where the backbone of any chance she had was going to be with this type of voter, both a Republican voter, but more importantly for her, an independent, a Democrat. She wanted them to flood the polls in Charleston, around Columbia, in those metropolitan areas with big concentrations of college degrees. In our exit poll, she's losing the college vote by four points to Donald Trump. Again, that's a swing of almost 20 points from New Hampshire, and that is the heart of what she was trying to pull off. That, that speaks to, I, I think, probably a failure here of her campaign to come anywhere close to what they were aiming for in terms of getting Democrats and independents motivated to cross over, to vote against Trump. We saw that the, the exit poll question that tells it all is that only 31% of this electorate says they're not a Republican. That may seem like a high number, but the all-time high in South Carolina was 39. Haley needed it even higher than that because 39% was the number for John McCain in 2000 when he was like Haley, trying to ride to victory on Democrats and independents. He still lost by double digits when almost 40% of the electorate was non-Republican. Haley barely got the number over 30% tonight. So just every one of these categories, uh, you're just seeing not just a win here for Trump, but, but a landslide. And again, just going back to the map here.
Yeah, it's, it's a small number, but we are, I think what's important here you're seeing is this is a pretty broad geographic swath here. And the shade of red, I don't know how these show up on the screen, but we've got two different shades of red here, Republican red. The darker one, the one that looks almost maroon, is Nikki Haley. The brighter one is Trump. You see in what's counted statewide right now, it's about a 30-point, a little bit short of a 30-point margin for Trump. And what you see is the votes that have been reported so far in all but one county are going for Trump. That's why these are all in, in his shade of red. The only exception, and we talked about this at the start of the show, if there's one county on this map you went in tonight saying Nikki Haley could have a shot at more than any other, it would be Charleston County. This is a very, very small number of votes here. You see just over a thousand. We'll see how this one develops over the course of the night, but you know, otherwise you're just seeing you know, not just Trump ahead in these counties, but you're seeing massive Trump margins in these counties as well. Um, you know, we talked about some of these that have come in too, you know, are just one metric we were using looking at this map was looking back to the 2016 primary and saying, you know, if you add up the Donald Trump, Ted Cruz vote together from 2016, which are the most Republican counties, you know, a place like Cherokee County up here, uh, where, you know, look at this, he's at 89%. Now, again, it's just a little less than 10%, but we're seeing numbers like this across the state right now. Um, with the margin statewide and what we're seeing in the exit poll, the, the one suspenseful piece of question, uh, question here as the votes come in is, you know, the rules in South Carolina are 50 delegates. If you win the statewide popular vote, you get 29 at-large delegates. The other 21 are awarded by congressional districts. South Carolina's got seven of them, three to the winner of each congressional district. Donald Trump swept them in 2016, but just take a look at the congressional district map here. We're starting to, we're going to run a little bit behind the results statewide, but you see in the 5th district, in the 7th district, this was one of Trump's absolute best areas of the state, Myrtle Beach, Conway, the PD. This was one of his best areas in 2016, continuing tonight. This is the district to watch, though, if there is a district to watch tonight. Um, and it is the first district, as we said, Charleston, suburbia there in Berkeley County, down by Hilton Head. Uh, very, very small scattering in Charleston uh, for Haley, but you see you go up to Berkeley County, yeah, it's 2%, but there's Trump up 27 points. So if Haley had any chance at picking off a congressional district and the three delegates that come with it, it would be down here. But the margins you're seeing right now suggest that's very unlikely to happen. And, and that's the other significance of these results. Yeah, this was a test, in a way, for Haley in terms of the future of her candidacy. We already knew the odds of her actually toppling Trump and winning the Republican nomination were astronomically small uh, coming into tonight. But the question was, could she do enough in South Carolina to prove that in the next wave of states here, especially on Super Tuesday on March 5th, there was a path to winning a couple states picking off of several dozen maybe congressional districts and getting some headlines that you're winning states and hey this is not a unanimous thing for Trump and again this is her home state you know and, and she had a month to campaign here and the numbers you're seeing from across the state right here are showing you the core of the Haley uh, strategy to do what I just described relies on states that allow Democrats and independents to vote, like South Carolina does. It relies on states uh, where there's a high concentration of college-educated voters that we're talking about right here. And you're just not seeing in the exit poll, and frankly, in the, in the returns that we're getting so far, you're not seeing evidence that there was any kind of a flood of Democrats and independents. And if you're not seeing that in South Carolina, her home state, the state she just spent a month campaigning in, and her campaign is saying, well, we're going to pull that off in Minnesota. We're going to pull that off in Virginia, in North Carolina in states like that. If she couldn't pull that off in South Carolina, it's hard to see her doing that at the statewide level anywhere, with the exception, it's not technically a state, but the District of Columbia, which is a type of Republican you don't see anywhere else in America. She may be able to win the District of Columbia, but it, 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 we keep an eye on the first district because if she does lose it, and if she does lose it by a substantial margin, the first district was a benchmark we were using for her campaign's hopes of picking off congressional districts in a bunch of Super Tuesday states and gathering delegates that way. And, and again, we'll see when the returns come in. But if she's not able to do that in the first district, you could take all those districts, just about all of them, off the map on Super Tuesday. And uh, it, it is, so this is not just a landslide loss in her home state. The implications for what her campaign was saying they were going to do over the next 10 days are, are kind of shattering from this.
So it's, it's 50, so if, she, if Trump does sweep every congressional district here, it'll be 113 to 17 for Donald Trump. He'll go into Michigan on Tuesday, and this is a perfect example. Michigan is a state you know, without party registration, like South Carolina. Anybody can turn out and vote in that Republican primary, and the Haley campaign looks and says, ooh, there's big suburban areas right outside of Detroit. You know, uh, you know look at uh, Oakland County, look around Ann Arbor, look in western Michigan where there's the, the Dutch Reformed Church that have been so resistant to Donald Trump. But again, the strategy for Haley in Michigan is the strategy she had in South Carolina, is to turn those, those Democrats and independents who fit that demographic profile out, and is, you're not seeing it right here. And then you go to Super Tuesday, you know, a week later, March 5th. You know, between, after tonight, going through Super Tuesday, there are going to be 1,000 delegates rewarded, uh, awarded on the Republican side. 70%, 700 of those 1,000 delegates are in states that are either winner-take-all. You get 50% plus one of the vote, you get all the delegates, or they're functionally winner-take-all, where it's a system like South Carolina's with some at-large, some congressional district, but all you have to do anywhere is get that simple 50% plus one majority, and you get all the delegates. And, and on top of that, for Haley, a lot of those primaries are closed or they're limited and you know California is the perfect example it's the mother load of delegates on March 5th there are 169 delegates in California it's a very liberal democratic state but on the, it's a Republican primary and it's closed Republicans only and it's winner take all for a majority so if Trump gets 50 percent plus one in California he gets all of the delegates in Texas 161 delegates it's a system like this he doesn't even have to win by much to get all 161 of the lion's share. So again, this just tells you what's coming likely for Haley here.
Yeah, again, just basically how this works in terms of the delegates is, as you see, there's 50 that are being given out in South Carolina. 29 of these 50 are based on the statewide vote. Whoever wins statewide picks up 29. We projected Donald Trump's going to win statewide, so he gets those 29 delegates. What's left after that is 21 delegates that are given out by congressional district, and that's what you see right here. It's a little rough to see with all the red here, but these are congressional districts. There are seven in, in the state, and each one has three delegates on its own. Seven uh, districts times three, that's the other 21 delegates. You win the district, you win all three delegates. So you see in these districts so far, one, two, three of them, we've already projected that Donald Trump will win those individual districts, which is three, six, nine more delegates for Donald Trump. So at this point, we've projected that 38 of the 50 are going to go to Donald Trump. Um, What's it, it, where there's a little bit of uh, a, a suspense right now, I don't know if that's the right word, but if there's any chance for Haley to win a congressional district, it's this one right here. This is the first district here. This is the low country. This is Charleston. We talked about Charleston has the highest concentration of college degrees, voters with college degrees of any county in the state. This is also an area of the state where you do have a lot of independents and Democrats, especially Democrats relative to the rest of the state. Folks, Haley's trying to attract over to the Republican side. And then you got big, fast, excuse me, fast growing suburb there. This is uh, Berkeley County, very fast growing. This is also part of the district. I think what's interesting is take a look right now in Berkeley. Donald Trump's margin over Nikki Haley is about 7,000 votes. And what we've got out of Charleston right now is Haley's margin over Donald Trump is about 6,000 votes. And you see there is a fair amount to come in Charleston. What else is in this district? The other biggie is Beaufort County, where we have almost no vote. This is where Hilton Head is. Again, this is an area with a big concentration of college degrees, a lot of wells, although probably more conservative uh, uh, than Charleston County is. So those are the biggies. There's a piece of Colleton County, a piece of Dorchester County in here as well. But I think it's interesting that between Charleston, excuse me, and Berkeley County, where just about all the vote is in, Haley's about even with Trump. The problem for Haley is, well, there is a lot of vote to come in Charleston, and she's certainly doing well with this. We think what we're looking at right here is the early vote, the ballots that were cast early, about a third of the total in Charleston. What we're seeing in other counties around the state now, where the same-day vote is being counted up and reported out, we're seeing Trump run better with the same day than he did with the early vote. So I'm not sure that this Haley, you know, margin over Trump is going to continue with the remaining Charleston County vote. And again, you just look at the past, Beaufort County is more favorable to Trump than Charleston County. So it, 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 let's see what happens with the remaining vote in Charleston. But that is, in terms of this election night in South Carolina, the open question is this first district. And if Haley could find a way to win it and pick up those three dist uh, those delegates, and, and like we said, if she were to succeed in winning the first district, it doesn't change the overall picture trajectory of the Republican race. But if you can win a district like the first demographically in terms of income, in terms of college degree concentration, this sort of thing, there are some districts out there on Super Tuesday where the delegates are awarded like this that Haley could then potentially win. But uh, again, we, I want to emphasize here, we're talking about a very, very small number of delegates and a very, very small number of districts in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but that's what we're looking at in, in South Carolina right now. And again, we can return to the statewide vote. Just check in on that. About a quarter is in right now. And remember, it, right, you see a 17-point Trump margin. This is basically, with a few exceptions here, early vote. It, we're starting to get same-day vote in, starting to potentially see a pattern where Trump is doing better with that. So we'll see how these numbers start to fill in. But I think from this point forward, we're really going to start getting more of that same-day vote, and we'll see if these numbers move. <clears throat>
Yeah, that really is it. It's a question of whether the final split is going to be a, a clean 50 nothing sweep for Donald Trump or if Nikki Haley is going to win a congressional district. Remember, you win a district, you get three delegates. There are seven congressional uh, districts in South Carolina. And so take a look here. Actually, you can see Charleston County and Beaufort County. This is where Hilton Head is here, kind of in the low country of South Carolina. Th these two counties right now are in Haley Red. Beaufort is, is all in the first district. A lot of, not, not all, but a lot of Charleston's in the first district. And if we pull up our friend in the congressional district map here, again, you see we have not called uh, several congressional districts, but a big one we have not called is the first district. And if you take a look in some of the component counties here, here's what, what we're seeing. Take a look. This is the bedroom county, bedroom community county of Berkeley County. It is very fast growing. Now, Donald Trump has opened up a, a pretty significant advantage over uh, Nikki Haley here. This is bigger than what we were seeing earlier. So Trump needs to get a big margin out of Berkeley County because uh, look at what Haley's getting out of Charleston right now with about half the vote in out of Charleston County. So the, the one thing we're getting some indications of looking at some of these counties around the state is that the election day vote, and that's what now being tallied. We've already basically seen the early vote in just about all these counties, but about two thirds of the vote is going to be election day vote. And that's what's coming in now. And we're getting some indications that may be more friendly to Trump than the early vote. If that's the case, then the remaining vote here in Charleston County, yeah, this would be the early vote plus some of the same day. But this Trump number could rise as the same day is coming in. I think that's kind of the critical question right here, uh, because if it stays at this level and the rest of that vote continues to go to Haley at an almost two to one margin, she is going to uh, she is going to get a lot of votes, bank a lot of votes that way. And then the question would really become Beaufort County. And again, what you're looking at here is the early vote in Beaufort County, none of the same day. And Haley jumps out to a 17 point advantage here. How different is that election day vote going to look from the same day vote? Does Donald Trump, you know, suddenly get over 50 percent of the election day vote and make Beaufort County a wash? Or does he not really do much better with the remaining vote? In, in which case, you know, if Haley were to put Beaufort and Charleston together, could that offset Berkeley? Could that offset the little piece of Colleton County, the piece of Dorchester County that's in this? And so that's the question right now. Um, there's still a lot of vote to come, but that's the suspense, you know, to the extent there is. If Haley wins that, that's three delegates for her. But like I said, she could take that. And there are some districts. I don't want to overstate this at all, but there are some districts looking ahead to Super Tuesday where they give out the vote like this that demographically are similar to this that she could then say, oh, I got to make a run at those districts. But that's, you know, there are going to be a thousand delegates, as I said, given out after tonight and into Super Tuesday. Very, very few are going to be three, de three congressional district delegates in a place like this.
just want to make sure that, like, you know, we're not, we haven't done that at 29 and she sort of run a Donald Trump on us. We're out well, of the actual, uh, the actual number. So quickly, where are we right now? Yeah, you, I mean, that's what you're seeing. Is he a 22-point lead for Donald Trump? A little bit less than two-thirds is in statewide. Um, I, I just look here and see what the biggest outstanding, uh, where we have the biggest outstanding vote. Okay. So uh, three counties to point to right now. The biggest single source of outstanding vote is in Greenville County. This is in the upstate. Uh, this is probably the biggest. Uh, uh, this is, you know, you think of the upstate maybe um, as, as not, uh, not as big, but actually, you know, population-wise it is. So th this is a place where we've got a lot of outstanding vote still to come that Haley could do, uh, could do fairly well with. But the second biggest place is this, Horry County, which is producing a massive vote tonight. And this is the heart of Trump country. Uh, this is, you know, uh, Myrtle Beach, Conway, and you see Trump's margin, and he's doing better with the same day vote, so he's getting padded there. And the third one I'd point to, the third biggest source of outstanding vote, is the one that's going to answer that question we've had here about the first congressional district and whether there's any chance, Haley. Uh, yeah, yeah, so there it is. All right, uh, much more to come tonight. Haley Bowser, but on the on the results
Yeah, I, I mean, look, you can see here we've got more than two thirds of the vote in here. Trump leading by just over 20 points here over Nikki Haley. It's kind of settled in at this uh, at this level. So I expect the final to be somewhere, you know, not more than a few points off this in either direction. So that's basically, you know, what you're looking at here. Obviously, you can see here it, 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 geographically a Trump sweep from the upstate, except it gets interrupted down here in Charleston and Beaufort County, which is where Hilton Head is. You see, that's the Haley. Haley Red right there. The other place where you see Haley Red is in Richland County. This is where the state capital of Columbia is. So these were weak counties, especially Charleston and Richland for Trump in 2016. These were the only two counties that he lost in the 2016 primary. So no surprise, I think, that it's a source of Haley's strength tonight. But it does lead to the one, I guess, outstanding question here as we look at this, and that is it is obviously a Trump win. Trump is going to win the overwhelming share of all the delegates in the state. He may win all 50 of the delegates. The question is, is it going to be 50 or is it going to be 47 for Donald Trump? 47 uh, to 3 or 50 to nothing. And the it, suspense all has to do with this area right here because Congressional districts have delegates that they award as a block. Each district, there are seven in South Carolina, each district gives three out to whoever wins that congressional district. The rest are just given to the statewide winner. And it's in this district down here, what I just circled is basically the first congressional district of South Carolina. This is represented in the House right now by Nancy Mace. This is probably... Um, uh, among uh, Republican-held districts in South Carolina, it's the least conservative, it's the most moderate in terms of its electorate. It has demographically the types of voters that we've seen Nikki Haley ap appealing to in polling and in previous states, suburbanites, college-educated, upper income, potentially an area rich with Democratic and independent voters who she's been trying to get to turn over and vote in the Republican primary. This is the kind of area that's particularly rich with that type of voter, at least potentially. And so right now, actually, I can call this, call this up on the screen, I think. Yeah, you can see this is the first district in here, and you see the component counties. This is a very close race in the first district right now. It's razor thin. It's about 500 votes separating Donald Trump and Nikki Haley. And the biggest outstanding piece of real estate, I'll just, I think this map is going to do something funny when I press this, but I want to show you Beaufort County. Yeah, see the map filled in. But Beaufort County is the biggest outstanding source of vote right now in the first district. We got a lot of it in, and as I said, it is razor thin right now. So very well what could decide this first district is Beaufort County. This is where Hilton Head is, and you see Nikki Haley's leading by 12 points here. Now, two things. We're not quite sure what the final vote total is going to be. We're estimating right now that's 41 percent, but these are estimates based on what we expected the vote total to be coming into this. As we've seen results come in from elsewhere, this number can, can change in terms of the estimated vote. It may come down in terms of the number of votes that are left here. We have seen Donald Trump, as they're, what they're counting up right now, is the votes that were cast today, the Election Day vote. We've seen Trump in Beaufort and elsewhere in the state doing better with the Election Day vote than he did with the uh, advance vote, the early vote. So the question really is, his number is improving slightly, but it's ticking up with each update we're getting in Beaufort County. How much vote is left there? Because if there's a substantial amount and Trump is doing well with it, he can, uh, he can win the first district, but if there isn't a lot, and this kind of a margin holds for Nikki Haley, she may end up picking off the first congressional district. If she does, she would walk away with three delegates. This, again, this is not the biggest uh, shift in the world. It would go from 50 to nothing for Trump if he were to win the first. It would go to 47 to three for Trump uh, if Haley were to win the first. But the other significance of that is when you look ahead, because Haley obviously reiterated tonight, she says she is in this you know, through Super Tuesday, there are a, a lot of states don't do it, but some states do this like South Carolina on Super Tuesday, where they award it by congressional district. And within those states, there are some districts that demographically resemble the first congressional district. So it's sort of if she could end up winning the first congressional district and she is going ahead with her candidacy, there are some other districts she could potentially pick off and pick some delegates up from. Um, and even some of the states still to come. Vermont is still to come. It's not a state, but the District of Columbia is still to come. Minnesota is a Super Tuesday state. These are places that are, you know, open primaries, much like South Carolina. And you have demographically some of the characteristics you're seeing in the first district. So if she were to win the first, I think it would be a, for her campaign in terms of, you know, a source of hope, it would be, hey, maybe that means he could take a Vermont. Maybe that it means he could take a D.C. Maybe that means 
means you could pick off a bunch of congressional districts, a handful of congressional districts, and get delegates that way. In the grander scheme of things, though, Donald Trump is getting the overwhelming share uh, of the delegates out of South Carolina tonight, no question about it. And that's going to be true, it would appear, based on this pattern. If the pattern we've seen in South Carolina and New Hampshire and Iowa continues, where the core Republican vote is just so strongly behind Trump, and it's really only the independents and the Democrats uh, where Nikki Haley's making the, the, the deep inroads. When you look at Super Tuesday, there are a lot of states that have closed primaries. You know, California, chief among them, only Republicans can vote. And it's winner take all. If you get a simple majority in the state, you get all 169 delegates. So there are a lot of places, most of the places on that Super Tuesday map uh, give out delegates either winner take all or close to winner take all. And obviously, just given Donald Trump's strength with core Republican voters, he could rack up huge, huge, huge numbers of delegates on Super Tuesday. What this story in the first congressional district suggests is that Haley could pick off a, a small piece of the delegate pie on Super Tuesday, but nothing, unless something were to just dramatically and completely change, nothing that would shift the trajectory of the overall race. You got it.